Everybody wants heaven, but they're living like hell. Got the whole church judging you, hoping that you fail. How you gonna win the war if nobody wanna help? But it ain't easy, gotta find the devil yourself. We got the group back together. It's been 10 years since we've last seen some of LA's most dynamic pastors, preachers, and speakers of the word. Well, I think 10 years has been long enough. I am Kim Whitley and I'll be your host for this much anticipated and might I add, long overdue reunion. It is good to see you bishops and pastors and we missing Where's that? Yeah, we missing that bishop, uh, McClendon. That McClendon. You know, G oh yes, yeah, he always busy, ain't he? Yeah, I'm sure he is just, you know, not, some things don't ever change. I'm sure he is very busy, and and we we bless you, sir. Right. But I wanted to see you here. Um, the brotherhood is here, Miss Kim. Uh, good yes, to meet you. Now, oh, good to meet Looking you. Looking beautiful as ever. Really Thank is. I love I love your look. I love that you 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 don't look like a traditional pastor. You come with. Your own style. Oh sure, no, I'm not traditional. No, you. I'm foundational though. That's good. Okay, but do you consider yourself the bad boy of the gospel? No, I'm. I'm probably the nicest one out of all this group right here. What just nice? I'm the, I'm the, listen, I'm, listen, I'm, listen. You have many nice. That? You have many nice bad boys. Yes, sir. Okay. There you go. That's what I'm in fact, some of the baddest yeah. boys in the world are nice. Boy. You were arguing with him at the, at the dinner. That was you, McClendon. He was no, arguing with us. No, no, he was. The, he liked he was arguing with me. He was at dinner. Oh, what, you remember what, what, when he and Dominique? Boom. Yeah. When they were uh, shacking. Uh, see? No. Here we go. Right. Okay. That part. That's we what we were talking about when you but got. And I was trying to tell him back then. He said shacking is not the Bible. Is, no, shacking is not the issue. You want to deal with the issue. The fornication is the issue, not the shacking. Because the question. shacking was really the overlay for oh, the I underplay. That's what you really wanted to know. And I would have told you, yes, I've had sex. You've had sex. We all have had sex. At the time, I was struggling in that area. He's okay. a young man. But, and I had a baby to show for it, on the show. Yes, I and saw so, the child. You know, since then, I've, I've, I've married my beautiful wife. For t now we've just celebrated 10 years. Fantastic. Wow. Let's talk about that. All the wonderful things that has taken place within the 10 years. That's right. The issue was really the sex issue. But see, when he mentioned that on the show, that thing followed me for the last 10 years. You shacking? Well, did you hadn't said shacking is OK? I never said shacking was OK. OK. I'm that listening. came from him. But, but, you, but, but now you're being contradictory. No, 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 no. That's what I thought. Because, because you're making a point that you can shack and still not sin. How many of us, and, and, and he's been divorced, I have been divorced. Okay. I've been divorced. You've been divorced. And you've been divorced. I've never been married. Okay, cool. And my marriage I, is still in force. I never thought in my life that I could be in bed with a woman and never want to touch her. Because it was fire in your bosom. No. No. Nope. It's because you the relationship. You don't want to touch the discipline. It ain't fire in the The relationship, the relationship had deteriorated mm -hmm. to the point that even in the marriage. You're talking about his wife, first wife. Yes. Even in the marriage, you didn't, didn't want to go to bed. Right. Got it. You understand me? A long-standing beef we saw on Preachers of LA, but also something we will see on this new Preachers Wedding Edition. Oh, it is airing on Merge TV. So now, when it comes to love and marriage, though, <laughs> Bishop Ron Gibson had a lot to say. <laughs> oh, when it came to Bishop Noel Jones, he seemed to have a slow walk to the altar. <laughs> and you had a lot to say about it. Bishop Jones, why haven't you committed to Loretta and asked her to marry you? He says, I was married. Yes. And I'm, I messed up in my mind. I'm conflicted about this. Why can't I hear Bishop tell you? Why were you on him so hard? Well, Kim, that's a good question, okay? And I have a good answer. A good answer is a God answer. I'm not just talking about an answer. Bishop Noel Jones is an icon. I know he talks about the iconoclastic and all those big words that you shouldn't put a pre preacher on a pedestal and make him so iconoclastic, remember that? But he's, he's articulate like that. But when you are a preacher, a general in the faith, like Bishop Noel Jones is, 
then you have a lot of young men that are watching him. He's mentoring a lot of young men. So it came to my mind, since he has so many young men gravitating to him and want to be like him, be a mentor and not a tormentor. Mm -hmm. Tormenting them in the sense of making them think it's okay to date a queen like Loretta, mm -hmm. who he was dating. One of the most beautiful ladies outside of my wife mm -hmm. in the world today, okay? And it didn't look good, especially after he revealed that he was dating her for 14 years. The Bible says, not Ron Gibson, not Dietrich Haddon, not Wayne Cheney, not Bishop Noel Jones. The Bible says that don't let your good be evil spoken of. That's totally out of context, that one. Out. That scripture doesn't apply to anything you just said. Okay, well, let's go to this then. How can a man, how, how can a man take fire in his bosom and not get burned. How can you have a beautiful lady like that? But they were and, friends. What my understanding, and, and, and I've been knowing them. No, no, they were more than friends because, because Loretta said on the show, if you recall, yes. she wanted to marry Bishop Jones. After she said she didn't want to. Oh, but then she recanted and said, I do so she want to marry. And so when you're in a relationship like that, it just doesn't look good for young men that are aspiring to be ministers like, like Bishop Jones. Right, but, but why did it bother you so much? You were passionate about this, because I'm gonna be honest with you. If this man ain't ready to marry me, I don't want him to marry me, because we're gonna have more than fire in my bosom. <laughs> I'm gonna have fire on the stove. That's a good point, Jim. <laughs> Jim. See, one, of, one of the things that Ron has not accounted for in a okay. relationship with Loretta is that Loretta is a very independent, very strong, uh, woman. Okay. I didn't want okay. a quiet, uh, passive right. the woman who I could control. Ooh. Yeah, well, well, uh, I wanted a woman. It. I wanted a woman who was equal. Never came up is what the point he made, and we didn't know that then. Uh, I don't think right. the world knew it that he had proposed before. That's true. That's we didn't know that. You're exactly right. And heard no. And I think the only person that I'm tormenting yes, is Ron now, Gibson. Did, so you were tormenting Loretta. Now, did Bishop Ron tormenting No, no, Ron not at all. Loretta, no, Sister Loretta. Not at all. Bishop, was his constant reminder that you have not gotten married, when you're going to get married, uh, did that get on your nerves? It didn't bother me one, one bit. Really? Oh, no. And I'm telling you why. Because when you have a certain amount of security about who you are, and then when you understand the person who everybody's talking about in relationship to mm -hmm. you getting married to her, mm -hmm. when you understand those dynamics, then you're not moved by it. I'm only moved by a sincere word from her, but she can't propose to me. I have to propose to her. Facts. Good man. And, and that's the whole point. And she can't rush the process or she, can't, 14 or, years. or she can't slow the process. Are you talking about a nationality or a reality? You, you, you Russian see, or Russian? See, as a single pastor, mm -hmm. for someone who waited 14 years and yes, someone sir. who, again, said he should have done it the moment that she signified the intention. I didn't say that. How, how long should a pastor wait? It depends. It's collecting data. You gotta wait as long as you can. I wanna know how long. Can I answer that very succinctly? Sure. Dating is a derivative from the word data, okay. where you get information. When you date a person, they don't show you their character, they show you their personality. It took me 14 years to collect data. Who? Who? Oh, that's man. all that was. Okay. Oh, Lord. By his day. own definition. That's it. Lord, as long day. as it took. Do you know where fornicators go? Do you have yeah. something personal with Loretta? I think oh, under the thank surface, you. Thank he you admires helping. Loretta. That's not under the surface. I, I do. He admires, I admire, but I don't desire. But, but I have a beautiful now, wife myself. I've noticed this. There is no admire without some modicum of desire. There is no admire. Yes, sir. Without a modicum okay. of desire. What is a lot of this? Let me bring this. Can you huh? jump in, please? <laughs> <laughs> I got you figure it out. Can <laughs> you just, jump this, in? But they put this. I need to hear your there thoughts. Ron you need to know mm -hmm. desire. In Bishop life. Ron Gibson need to know that marriage is not the solution to everybody's lust problem. I never said that is. What, but you're saying but you're, be with you're the saying woman that marriage and you are a preacher is better to marry than to burn. 
Yeah, but that's that we've used that to get these young people and, and in marriages and, and, and when they get in I it, need to hear it's a mess. That's true, DJ. It's and so better that's to... why the divorce rate is at all time high within the church because of that kind of teaching. It's better to come. I'm a victim of that. Let's... When when Bishop got married, they were wailing and crying. I'm sorry, they were. There were some women who were wailing and crying, and I didn't understand why I could not sit in the front row. Now I didn't know that pastors and bishops went through this, but women would sit in the front row. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I might not say what I heard. Yeah, open their legs. Wow. I'd have panties on in the house of the Lord. While I'm preaching. Coming up on Preacher's Reunion. I lose my career. I lose my life. When, when Bishop got married, they were wailing and crying. I'm sorry, they were. There were some women who were wailing and crying. And I didn't understand why I could not sit in the front row. Now, I didn't know that pastors and bishops went through this, but women would sit in the front row. Yeah. I, I might it's not flat. say what I heard. Yeah, open their legs. Wow. I'd have panties on in the house of the Lord. While I'm preaching. While he's <laughs> preaching. Yeah. In the front row, and now I, I, I didn't understand the security and all this, but I saw it, what you all go through with my own eyes, that the devil is busy mm. and they're gonna come at you at all angles. So you have to be a strong man or a strong preacher because it was it's difficult for your congregation to understand what's going on unless they're in your circle. So a lot is going on that you all probably don't even know. So when I say what he went through or whatever he's gone through and all the women and all that, for all of you. Data goes both ways, right? It's not only a potential mate, but it's introspective data to, to calculate, you know, how much damage there was from the previous situation. You know, financial implications, right? right? Um, trust breached. You know, these are all things that have to be navigated. Sometimes, again, there are great candidates there, but the reality is, you know, there's got to be some introspection. And I don't know that we can put a timeline on that. Wait, 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 hold up. This sounds like something personal. <laughs> no, uh, no, you're not going to make it personal. Well, but I mean, <laughs> obviously you've gone through some things yeah, sure. and you can share with us. Sure. Yeah. Uh, are you collecting data uh, and the things that you've gone through? Has it, you're divorced now. Do you feel like maybe your spirit or, or is damaged somewhat and you need time to repair it? Well, the beauty is it's, it's been almost a couple of years in almost a couple of years. Uh, you know, it, it feels fresh to many people, but it, there's been significant time. So I feel, feel healthy um, with regard to that, but there's no experience we have that doesn't change our lens, the lens we see the world with. And so my prescription is definitely updated. Um, and um, there, there are certain things you, you didn't see at 20 uh, that you see at 44. And um, it makes you process a little bit more. You evaluate things from a financial standpoint. <laughs> Processing uh, finances. You, yeah, you, you, you evaluate um, uh, you know, small idiosyncrasies yeah. that you don't have the time on this end to discover 15 years from now. Right. So I, I believe process is significant. And uh, I was actually looking to glean some wisdom uh, from the two of the, 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 these two gentlemen um, as relates to that. Uh, but what I do know is this time around, I'm not selecting anyone for the church one or for the broader community that's definite it, it has to be for me so it has to be for me yes. are you dating are you single what's what's going on are there women sitting in the front row that need a thing put over their legs what's, what's going we on? haven't had to throw any lap scarves <laughs> you know, so the women are being uh, but you know after processing for a while and um, you know I think processing well I'm definitely uh, open to new experiences. Yeah. Are you open for reconciliation? Oh. No. What is reconciliation? Mean? Like, if you had a gentleman like Bishop Jones, Dietrich, myself, to counsel you as a support system to perhaps for my, reconcile? For my, for my, uh... To reconcile with your first wife? No. Okay, you've been divorced. Do you have any advice for Pastor Chase? I think he that findeth the wife findeth the good thing and obtains favor with the Lord. Yeah. It, it's a man's decision to get into a marriage, and it's that same man's decision to exit the marriage. And God gives him that authority 
to make that decision based on what he's experiencing in the marriage. And you can't control individuals in the marriage. You can't, you can't control a human being, how they think, how they feel, what they decide to do. If a woman decides to make a move, what can you do about that? So we gotta be careful about this blanket uh, communication that makes people feel that have had to get out of marriages for millions of different reasons. They've had to get out of it. For instance. For, for their own sanity. For instance, what reason? I had to get out of my marriage for no, my own sanity. No, as it's germane to him. No, what I'd what, like to say, I think it's It was important. his decision to, to he, defi- he found her, he made a decision to get into it for whatever reason, without getting into his personal business. Right. He had to make an executive t- decision between the two to part ways. Right. And, and all three of us here have had to do that. You've been, been, you've been the only one okay. that's been uh, so, uh, blessed in that area, that's, but it doesn't make you better than any of us. I didn't say that, did I? I just want to make it clear. Or anybody that had to make that decision. If I listen to religious thinking, mm-hmm. it'll have me locked into something and be miserable, never to have my family, never would have seen the other side of my life. So I really don't, you know, I don't pay attention to a lot of that. That I just, I, I hear it going one end out the other. I'm living my truth. Wayne is living his truth. Uh, uh, Bishop has lived this truth for 14 years and now he's married, happily married. What am I living? Uh, you're living your truth. Oh, you've been married to a, happy, to a vet. You you, that's your, your that's you, though. That do with happiness. But that's life you. is not a, a flowery you, bed of ease. You're going to have some mountains and some valleys in marriage. Yeah. Okay? Oh, yes, we do know you that. two Absolutely. different people. Are you happy? Are you together. not happy now? And that takes are you happy? Am I happy? Yes, are you happy? Sometimes I am. Sometimes, I'm, sometimes I feel like a nut. Sometimes I don't. <laughs> you figure that part out. There's a difference between being above the radar and under the radar. We deal with so many people in our churches who have divorces, whose marriages break down, but they are under the radar. His position in relationship to me was so many people are iconoclastic in their view of an individual like me, which means then that I have to have a standard and I have to exemplify behavior that is equivalent to how they view me or how they want to follow. Now, what everybody should understand is we get that. We know that. So the question that people like Ron should ask is, what in the world was going on in the house of an individual who knows how he's going to be viewed, who knows the pain that he's going to have to deal with, who knows how he's going to be judged by the majority of the people who's looking at him. What in the hell is going on in his house that in spite of all that he has to face, he decides with his children, with his grandchildren, with grandparents, with the congregation, with the other pastors. He, if he moves to divorce, mm-hmm. they need to say something horrific has to be happening in that household My God. for him to make that decision. And then I secondly, tr- come on. Secondly, the issue of how long it took me to marry. How long it took me to marry was contingent also upon the fact that I had to reconcile in my mind that it was all right to marry again while my former wife was still living. Wow. So when you put all of the pressures- That's deep. That we have to deal with when we move into a situation where we're saying this ain't gonna work and I lose my career, I lose my life, I lose whatever I have gained, but I can't stay here. And nobody seems to understand that we have calculated down to the last minute We've all taken that in. I've taken that in. The things, and the people at home watching, I'm sure have taken that in. Because like I said before, we have no idea 
how you all live your lives. That was powerful. And I thank you for that, uh, yeah. Bishop. Thank you for being vulnerable. Um, uh, yeah. I received that and I just, I, right now, I, this is a good time to bring out the wives. Let's welcome First Lady Loretta Jones and First Lady Lavette Gibson. Um, we missing somebody. Where's my girl? How many? Dominique? Yeah. Uh, she was good on the show. Where is she? On the show, but you know, Dominique is, uh, she's Mrs. Her mother. Mm -hmm. And this represents her mother. We found, she, she had a heart attack. And, and Dominique found her, her and the kids found her. Oh, okay. Yeah, wow. so. And uh, she was having some issues with her heart, but we didn't know it was that to that extent, you know. Mm -hmm. She sends her love to all the ladies. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, and, and mm -hmm. we, I, I represent her. And a big shout out to Dominique. You are missed. You are missed, Dominique. Well, I mean, you're close to uh, McClendon and Dietrich. Like, how is that being in the middle of this uh, ongoing beef? Well, you understand the idiosyncratic differences between them. And, uh, and when you adjudicate, you don't take sides. You gotta pick a side, Bishop. No, no, we don't, <laughs> you we don't take side. sides. See, one of the things is when he's right, he's right. When Mac is right, he's right. He's never right, he's never right. A man standing over a man and talking down to him is never right. No, no, That's the, I'm he a was Detroit wrong. guy. He was wrong at that point. He was wrong, there we yeah. go. That's at what I'm looking for. At that point, he Did was wrong. Did you tell him he was wrong, Bishop? Oh yeah, he was wrong My at man. that point, <laughs> but, uh, but, when he's wrong, he's wrong, but you've been wrong too. Not in that matter. Not in that matter, no, definitely not. But, but I she find said, no fault in a She said ongoing beef. But I don't think it's no, ongoing. It's not ongoing? Oh, no. I, I think he has an all ongoing beef with me. No, it's not the McCoys and the, who was the other McCoys? Had, McCoys. Had it's nothing like that. No, 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 no. no. no well, no. the issue started because of an entourage, right? You were. No, no, he stood up and said, son. No, she said when the, it the started. The whole discussion was about him, I think. the honorary gotcha, gotcha. and the over, entourage. It started over the entourage. And, well, I mean, how did it start over the honorary? Where, where the honor, yeah, yeah. Yes, the, I still uh, believe that The entourage shouldn't. was predicated, the honorarium was predicated on the entourage. Boom. So because he's got a big entourage, oh. that means big honoraria. And you had a problem with and the entourage of honoraria. It didn't Just, come without having his entourage and, and without a certain amount of money. Doc, oh. when you didn't have anybody there, God he, called you, you yeah, were willing to go. Yeah, but he should be here to defend You him. was going for chicken dinners, preaching everywhere. When you're trying he's to get your here, name so out there, now your name in lights, now you gotta have an entourage. Just, the people's needs are different. Mm. Uh, for instance, for instance, uh, my wife may need a makeup person with her. Then she needs a security person with her. With all the things she's been through, she needs a security person with her. No, let's get to it, First Lady Loretta. You came in with a large entourage. It's my staff. It's your sta staff entourage? Yeah, they, they work for me. And at, then you gotta have somebody take care of my dogs. So right? Yeah, have dog. Take care of the, the makeup, the, the clothes, clothes, and, and the it's clothes. gonna take care of us. Well, Loretta's a beautiful, classy lady who needs that. Does he need that? But is Mac he a is beautiful, classy lady Mac or a man? But Mac is a handsome man who needs that. Oh, is he? I'm about to scream right now. <laughs> oh, well, he got a point there. Mac got his that thing is true. Together. He got, got his thing, too. Okay. You know, so, right. so you know, do we have a problem? Need. No. That's, that's hey. what you need. Do we have a problem with the first lady having an entourage? Coming up on Preacher's Reunion. When Jesus was getting ready to leave the Garden of Gethsemane. Yes. He says, Peter, do you have your swords with you? Yes. Peter said, I have two of them. Yes. Jesus said, that's enough. Let's roll, big homie. He was, and it's in Luke 22, 38, to let you know you can carry a 22 and a 38. So why but I just, I just carry a nine, though. Do we have a problem with the First Lady having an entourage? See, what ha what's happening when we're here, I had to wait for two hours. We were working. We're working on other projects. I just can't sit with idle time. We have to work. So everybody was working? Yes, it was working. We were emailing and calling people back, putting things in place because we're opening a new church. And so we need to be available. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you feel about that? I That's think it's wonderful. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Dietrich. I don't, Dietrich, do you have an entourage? He 
a staff. I'm sorry. St I staff. have a staff. You have staff. They don't travel with me, but I, you know, I don't need makeup and and all the stuff. You know, I don't. And then we have the puppies, and then you know, have yeah. to have a sitter with them. No, but I'll be honest. Let's let's uh, now let's just be honest. People looking at this feel a certain way. When well, they, they say, well, first lady got somebody, can, she got to watch the dog, feel... she got to watch... What do you say? I'm, I'm, you go, I'm just talking for the people. Okay. You know how they, they feel. They are entitled to feel what they feel. You can only do what you can afford to do. And if you can afford to do that, it's your money. People, when they see that you're doing well and you wear what and live well, some people don't like that. Um... You know, you talk about, when you talk about what people don't like and things happening, you mentioned security, and we talked about entourage. And, uh, you know, we are, I've been knowing them for a while, friends with uh, Lady Loretta, and uh, you had an incident where you were attacked. I, 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 I didn't believe it. As much security as the bitch got all around me, I could not believe that someone would actually attack you and how are you doing with that? And can you explain what happened? Or, you know, this is your, your opportunity to give your side. Well, I think it bothers her a great deal to even talk about it. Now I've made sure that I've got one person around her who you better not come close because I had to do something to fix that. And she's still insecure about it. She's nervous when someone comes close to her. But she has every right to be able to stand at a pulpit and talk to people. And then some of these people are literally deranged. And we have to deal with the mental health that is circling in our churches. I've been knowing you and I guess, I, if you don't mind, I, I, I see, I feel a sense of quietness in you. And I'm, I'm just wondering since this attack, if you feel like, how, are you, how do you move forward? The problem is, when you're in a church environment, you let your guards yes. down, right. period. So now I got a gangster security man. Uh -oh. I got, and it's my job to protect her. What do you mean by gangster? That's why I don't pray with my gangster. Eyes. Gangster, you know what we're talking about. It's <laughs> alert. No, you, you understand gangster. You know gangster. You know gangster. Now you talk about gangster. If anybody don't know gangster, you know gangster. You're probably carrying your gat right now. Are they in other saying? words, in other words, I have a security group now. Yeah. Group. She looked like my dear, didn't she? Can I say something? This is my wife. She asked about my wife. Okay, I'm sorry. Can you cool off? I'm a sorry. She bit wasn't friend? always your wife. Yeah. She is now. Okay. All right, yes, brother. sir. Protect your wife. Is it okay? I gotta protect my okay. wife. And speaking of protection, do you feel some sense of, I wouldn't say maybe some sense of guilt or something I felt that that inadequate. Happened? I felt inadequate. I felt a sense of inadequacy. I say, uh, and 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 in in Doc's word, I done waited this long to marry a woman, right. and then you have somebody clobber her. Right. You see what I'm saying? I feel quite inadequate. And then uh, then you start dealing with the issues of forgiveness mm -hmm. and your ability to forgive somebody who has done this kind of thing, and then you gotta end up being Christ-like in a situation mm -hmm. that, and then you expect her to reduce how she feels in a situation that is so anti who she is, because she would never do that to anyone. Mm -hmm. In this case, this case was a case where it was, this lady was known. Wow. You had never had a woman Come after you in your church. I have women come after me. Secrets. You've been I have in women the come after me all the time. Talk to Dietrich, and they know, you know he's married. All the time. But, all the time. Uh, Dominique yeah. play that. <laughs> she throw hands and elbows, she can lay hands and the church know it. Listen, listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> let let me make a point. Let me make a point. Of the making of beautiful women, there is no end. We have to end it. Mm -hmm. Wait, what's that mean? That simply means. No matter how old you are, no matter what your calling is, if you're in the public, somebody's gonna like you. Mm -hmm. But you have to end it. You have to say, I'm with her, and I will be with nobody else. That's good. Because no matter where you look, no matter how old you get, beautiful women are coming every day from every age. And the older you get doesn't minimize the attention. Men hit on my wife in front of my face. 
I'd slap him and say, that's my wife. No, no, no. The Bible no. says lay hands on the sick. The Bible <laughs> says he'll recover. <laughs> Okay. I'm going to put you in time, man. You've been violent. I'm going to tell you why. You mess with this. Now he's you're stepping on Mr. Bible. Gilmore's property. He's quoting the Bible to be I, violent. I, did you go through a metal detector before you came in here? Are you strapped right now? Did you go through the metal detector? Oh, no, you just asked me, Bishop. No, I, no I, games. I don't. don't I'm going to tell you the truth. It's not a game, but we live in America, okay? And we have an no, amendment. Quote the Bible to the assailant. Okay. The okay. I quote, oh. quote, quote the Bible. Quote the Bible to the assailant. I quote the Bible to the assailant. Yeah. In Luke 22, 38. Uh -huh. Okay. What, what chapter? 22, 22, 38. Verse 38. Yeah. When Jesus was getting ready to leave the Garden of Gethsemane. Yes. He says, Peter, do you have your swords with you? Yes. Peter said, I have two of them. Yes. Jesus said, that's enough. Let's roll, big homie. He was, and it's in Luke 22, 38, to let you know you can carry a 22 and a 38. So why but I, just, I just carry a nine, though. Coming up on Preacher's Reunion. Oh, no, oh. Oh, what she mean by we judging, Loretta? How am I judging? If you were getting on a jet and you're going from, say, New York to L.A., and there was only one first-class seat. I can't Bishop. sit up there like sardines. Oh, I want to give you some advice on I don't marriage. need advice that's ignorant. Stop being fake and give us the real you. That's why preachers are public enemy number one right now, because we being fake. Preachers! Everybody wants heaven, but they're living like hell. Got the whole church judging you, hoping that you can tell. How you gonna win the world if nobody wanna help? Yeah. But it ain't easy, trying to find the day.